Hello everyone and welcome to the wool patch and our sewing machine needle video. Let's access the databanks now and tell you all about them. Sewing machine needles are classed by two characteristics. The size of the needle, which refers to the thickness of the needle shaft, and the type of the needle for a specific purpose or project. You'll see these two characteristics, the size of the needle and type of the needle, on the front of any pack of sewing machine needles. Let's take a closer look at a sewing machine needle. At the top you have the shank. One side is rounded, the other side is flat. The flat side always goes away from you when putting in a new sewing machine needle. You then have the shaft of the needle. At the front that's facing you there is a little groove where the thread will sit. Behind, facing away from you, is where we have the scarf and this is changed according to the type and purpose of the needle. You then have the eye where the thread will go through and the point. And it's this point and eye that change according to the type and the purpose of the needle. And it's these two that can have a, a big impact on what you're sewing and how well it sews. So let's talk about the type of needle first. This is a universal needle. This is the needle that probably most of us will buy. The universal needle has been designed with a point that is slightly rounded. The technical term for this would be a slight ball point. I suppose it's a mixture of pointiness for woven fabrics and ball pointiness for knits. It makes this needle very universal. It will sew most woven fabrics knits and synthetics. To make all this easier to understand, uh, think of it like you were a photographer and you have a posh camera. Universal is like the auto setting on the camera, you know, that sort of green mark that you have on the dial. You leave it on there and off you go. You would point and shoot and let the camera do the work for you. It takes good pictures on the whole and you don't have to think. It will change the settings accordingly. Universal needles are the same with your sewing. The everyday casual sewer, like me when I first started sewing, can now sew pretty much all they want project-wise without having to get too technical. So I could sort those curtains out and shorten them. I could make a project bag out of cotton. I could lengthen a pair of trousers. Oh, I could even make a t-shirt out of the jersey knit fabric. I don't have to think because the needles have been designed to work universally across most fabrics, like the green auto setting on my camera. But after a while of taking pictures or videos on auto, you start to experiment with the settings in order to improve your skills and up your game as a photographer. I'm starting to now play around with the ISO, the, the white balance and other settings on the camera and I change them specifically to the situation I'm in regarding the photo or filming. The same is now happening with my sewing. So if you really want to improve your sewing, you would go into more detail with your needles and choose a specific type for the purpose or project of that time. So I don't use those universal needles anymore. So, here's the lowdown on all the needle types and how the points and eyes differ for specific purposes and projects. The ballpoint needle. This is ideal for cotton knits, interlock, rib knits, fleece, double knits, suede and most knit fabrics or jersey. The tip is more rounded than the universal needle and it's designed to push the fabric fibers apart than cutting them, preventing the knit fabric, we call it jersey as well, from laddering or running after stitching. The stretch needle. This is designed especially for two-way stretch knits. Spandex, lycra, power net, silk jersey, um, anything that's highly elasticized synthetic fabrics. Not really for your average jersey. Use the ballpoint needle for that. The stretch needle has a specifically designed scarf to help it prevent you from getting skip stitches. The jeans needle, ideally suited for denim fabrics. 
Heavy twill, workwear, or densely woven fabrics such as canvas or heavy linens. This needle is engineered to have a very sharp point and a stiffer shank to resist needle deflection and allowing penetration of a really dense fabric. The metallic needle, sometimes called metafill too, ideal for sewing and embroidery with rayon and metallic threads on woven or knitted fabrics. The metallic needle is designed with a very large eye, allowing the threads to feed through freely as you sew without splitting, burring or shredding, because metallic thread tends to be a lot thicker as well. This needle is also suitable for general purpose sewing, giving the added advantage of being easier to thread due to the bigger eye. So if you're struggling to see, use a metallic needle. The Sharp or Microtex needle. The sharp point of this needle is designed for stitching tightly woven fabrics and is ideal to use with silk, microfiber and other synthetic fabrics. The sharp point will give you a perfect straight stitch, making it an ideal needle for top stitching and patchwork. The quilting needle. Ideal for piercing and quilting layers of cotton fabrics uh, with the wadding batting in between, or even if you're just piecing and you're going through several seams. It has a strengthened shaft, which also helps to reduce needle deflections as the needle goes through multiple layers of fabric. So the quilting needle is perfect for that because of that strengthened shaft. The leather needle has a cutting point and is used for sewing leather, suede and difficult to sew projects. It is often referred to as a chisel point needle because the point resembles an axe as a chisel in motion. The top stitching needle, and I have to say this is my favourite needle and is the one I use an awful lot of the time, in fact nearly most of the time. It has an extra large eye which accommodates thick top stitching thread extra sharp point too, which allows the needle to penetrate through all the fabrics, like you would do when top stitching or even when quilting. The embroidery needle is specially designed for machine embroidery using rayon, polyester or cotton machine embroidery threads. This needle features a wider hole to allow the thread to pass through freely. Think of that needle going up and down many, many times and very, very quickly. Another feature is a pontoon scarf with oversized bump to reduce the chance of skipped stitches, which can result when fabric is flexing up and down rapidly. Uh, with the, the fast moving needles, what we just talked about. That's the type of needle covered. Let's talk now about the size of the needle. All sewing machine needle packaging will have two sets of numbers written on them. These numbers refer to two systems, the European system and the American system. The American system is imperial numbers, the European system is metric. The larger numbers are European and the imperial numbers, the smaller numbers, are American. The larger the numbers that you see, the thicker the needle. The size then links to the fabric that you're using. The larger the numbers, the thicker the fabric you can sew. Conversely, smaller numbers are for sewing finer fabrics. You can buy different sizes of needles according to the purpose or project. So, for example, jeans, you could buy 9014, a pack of. But the Class A needles that I sell also sell a mixed or an assorted size. So you might get a 9014 or a 116. So now we can see how clever the universal needle is because it can carry pretty much any one of those categories from a 7010 to a 9014 and will cover most types of fabric. But if you're doing a specific purpose or project or a specific sewing project um, with a specific fabric, then it's really great to try and pinpoint that size and use a specific needle rather than just the universal one. So there you have it, the two characteristics you can up your skills as a sewer and choose specific needles according to the fabric you're using or the project that you're doing. Happy sewing!